Well, hi. Welcome again to another edition of From the Pastor's Pen. My name is Pastor Carl Miller with Heritage Presbyterian Church in New Braunfels, Texas. And the title of our edition today is Repairing and Restoring Communication. Our focus text comes from Ephesians 4, verse 29. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Well, communication can make or break relationships. Marriages are no exception. In fact, communication breakdown in a marriage can set heightened and progressive stress and strain in the relationship ablaze. Like all churches, the Ephesian church had its share of communication struggles that the Apostle Paul worked by the grace of God to correct and reshape as the Spirit was at work maturing and molding them into the beautiful body that Jesus made and called them to be. Our focus text in Ephesians 4 follows and is connected to the important context of verses 20 through 24. But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. An important part of new man living involves the words that come out of our mouths. We need to be reminded of this daily. Communication, both verbal and nonverbal, affect all relationships in our lives. And therefore, one who has been taught by and has learned Christ must never forget two foundational truths. First, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. We see this in Luke 6, verse 45. And in light of our sinful hearts, corrupt words, or literally rotten, putrid words, can and all too often do come out of our mouths from the corruptions in our hearts. And not only do such words reveal our corrupted heart, but they can also corrupt the mind and heart of the hearer. And for these reasons and more, Restraint and self-control must be active to close our lips and stop them. Such loose-lipped communication is displeasing to God and only harms our spouse, ourselves, as well as others who hear us. And knowing this, we must go to the Lord, like David did, beseeching him to set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Psalm 141, verse 3. Remember James' instruction about the unruly, deadly, poisonous tongue. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives? or a grapevine bear figs. Thus no spring yields both salt water and fresh. This comes from James 3, verses 10 through 12. Indeed, my friends, all divided mouth and forked tongue talking has to stop and be repented of. As children of God who are being transformed by the renewing of our minds, we must have words that are singularly good for necessary edification or literally building up for spiritual advancement. This is critical for husbands and wives. We must make sure that we are building each other up and not tearing each other down. Such words can and should include constructive criticism along with godly instruction. Two good questions to ask yourself are, in this conversation, what things or areas need to be built up in the person I'm talking to? And how are my interaction and words going to, Lord willing, bring that good fruit about? Among other things, healthy biblical communication involves both listening and speaking the truth in love. 
Really, active listening is a good place to start in relational communication, restoration, and maintenance. And what does Scripture say biblical listening looks like? We'll consider James 1, verses 19 and 20. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. My friends, it's the one who listens intently, even intently to the word of God, who progresses in godliness. Proverbs 18, verse 13. He who answers a matter before he hears it, it is folly and shame to him. Again, the fool blurts out answers to matters that they haven't taken time to hear carefully. Listening before speaking is essential to healthy communication. Proverbs 12, verse 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who heeds counsel is wise. My friends, the fool thinks he knows better, but really doesn't. The wise is humble enough to learn from the experience of others and prayerfully discerns what is good counsel and follows it. Proverbs 2, verses 1 and 2. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. We must be intentional in causing ourselves to pay attention. We must direct our minds, emotions, and will to be constrained by, guided by, and see the great value of the wisdom of the word. And so after we listen well, how then should we speak? We'll consider Proverbs 15, 1 and 2. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge rightly, but the mouth of fools pours forth foolishness. Indeed, words are powerful to build up or destroy relationships. Therefore, make sure the right words are in your answer, so that what should be a turned away isn't stirred up. Proverbs 15, verse 4. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it breaks the spirit. Again, this wholesome tongue is literally referring to a healing tongue. Indeed, a conciliatory tongue mends relationships. Colossians 4, verse 6. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how, to, how you ought to answer each one. It is necessary that Christians live and speak in a way that is glorifying to God, especially with those on the outside. Proverbs 12, verses 18 and 19. There is one who speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. The truthful lip shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. See the effect of words on relationships. There is great strength in the truth, whereas lies are weak, fleeting, and damaging. Ephesians 4.15 But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ. Love must control what we say, my friends. If love is what is driving us to speak to others, we'll be concerned about how we speak to them. We'll watch our words as well as the attitudes, motives, and tones with which we speak to them. We will strive not to give offense by the way we speak the truth. As you go about speaking truth and love, keep in mind its purpose. It's a means for growth. Proverbs 16, verses 23 and 24. The heart of the wise teaches his mouth and adds learning to his lips. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. The wise speak out of a mind informed by the truth. Pleasant words have great value in healing relationships and they should be used often. Beloved, I'll leave you with three things. First, see the importance of restored and repaired communication 
in biblical reconciliation of your marriage and other relationships. Don't give up on working through communication fractures. But secondly, be committed to growing in opening your ears and closing your mouth. When you're ready and it's necessary to open your lips, from a heart of love, prayerfully seek God's grace to speak what is godly and wise, building up your spouse, building up others you speak with, rather than spewing poison upon them, tearing them down. And thirdly, be committed to being patient with progress. As communication didn't break down overnight, neither will it be repaired overnight. There will be ups and downs as old habits and our choice of words often die hard. But nonetheless, patiently and persistently walk and talk together to the glory of God. Well, amen. I hope this is a blessing to you here today. And I hope you'll join me again next time for another edition of From the Pastor's Pen. God bless you, and I'll see you then.